Now there's a vast number of techniques you can use for integration and this video goes through three of them. So let's look at the integral of tan squared x. We can use the fact that 1 plus tan squared x equals sec squared x. So using that we can say that instead of writing tan squared I can write sec squared x minus 1. Sec squared is a standard integral. The, different, the differential of tan x is sec squared. So d by dx of tan x equals sec squared x. So if I integrate sec squared x, I get uh, tan x. And obviously if I integrate 1, I get x. And that's plus c. So it's a standard technique that on the left hand side of this line we've got the integral this equals this equals this on the right hand side we've got some working out to show what we're doing here we've got the integral of sine squared x we can use the fact that cos 2x equals 1 minus 2 sine squared x so if I rearrange that I get sine squared x uh, I get 2 sine squared x is 1 minus cos 2x so 1 sine squared x is a half minus a half cos 2x so there's my work on the right hand side and I can say that this equals the integral of a half minus a half cos 2x now the integral of a half is a half x. Integral of cos 2x, well let's think about differentiating sine 2x. If I differentiate sine 2x, I get cos 2x, but then I've got to differentiate the 2x, the chain rule, so there's going to be a 2 there. So if I go back on this side here, I've got a half, so let's just write a half, and then I've got the integral of cos 2x, well, I know the integral of 2 cos 2x is sine 2x. Let's just say that again. The integral of 2 cos 2x is sine 2x. So the integral of 1 cos 2x must be a half sine 2x. Divide both sides by 2. That's not clear. Let's just adjust. So a half sine 2x is going to be cos 2x. So because of this statement here, working backwards, um, I can write the integral of a half cos 2x uh, is a half, <coughs> is a half, that's the half, and then the integral of cos 2x is a half sine 2x plus c. Just tidy that up, so it's a half x minus a quarter sine 2x plus c. But it is very important that you keep your working out and your formulas you're using separate from the flow of the integration. Now before we move on to the uh, next lot of integrations just a reminder about how to differentiate a log function. If you differentiate ln x it's 1 over x. What happens if you differentiate ln, ln of 3x? Well it's 1 over 3x then differentiate the 3x that's 3 that's also 1 over x. What happens though if you differentiate ln of 7x squared plus 5x well it's 1 over 7x squared plus 5x then you need to multiply by the derivative of the contents of the brackets it's the chain rule differentiate 7x squared plus 5x if I differentiate 7x squared plus 5x it's 14x plus 5 to generalize this if I differentiate the natural log of some function, it's 1 over that function multiplied by the derivative of the contents of the bracket, in other words that function differentiated. So if I, it's 1 over fx, then differentiate what's inside the bracket for ln, which is fx, differentiate that as f dashed x. So the inverse of differentiation is integration, so if I've got any function in that format, I know that it's 
natural log of that function. The modular signs are needed to stop having any negatives. You've got the log of a negative number um, and there's a proof which shows that by putting the modular signs in we keep the values the same. So for example if I've got the integral of uh, 5x squared plus 2x on the bottom and 10x plus 2 at the top and the integral of that is the natural log of 5x squared plus 2x plus c. Now let's think about integrating this function here. Firstly we can split this into partial fractions so x minus 5 over x plus 1 x minus 2 is a over x plus 1 plus b over x minus 2. Multiply through by x plus 1 x minus 2. x minus 5 is a lots of x minus 2 plus b lots of x plus 1. This is an identity. It's true for any value of x. Let's take x equal to 2. So minus 3 is 0 uh, plus 3b, which means b is minus 1. Let's take x equal to minus 1. Then uh, what have we got here? We've got minus 1 minus 5, that's minus 6. Uh, minus 1 in here, so that's minus 3a. And then minus 1 plus 1 is 0. So that means a equals 2. Go back to the original question, which is x minus 5 over x plus 1, x minus 2. We can split this into partial fractions, what we've just done. We said that uh, a was 2 and b was minus 1. So it's now this integration. Now this is very nearly a, uh, some Lun expressions because if I differentiate the bottom it's very nearly the top. If we, we can adjust that because it's OK to take numbers out of the integral signs. So it's 1 over x plus 1, and then um, it's minus 1 times 1 over x minus 2. So I've split this into two fractions. I've taken the 2 out and I've taken the minus 1 out. I've now adjusted it so if I differentiate the bottom it's the top. If I differentiate the bottom it's the top. So we've now got 2 natural log x plus 1 minus natural log x minus 2 plus c. This can be tidied up. We'll do this on the next slide. So there it is. I've written it out again. That 2 can come in as a power. And I'm going to write c as the natural log of a because the natural log of a is also a constant. Why am I doing that? You'll find you'll see in a minute. Now what we've got here is ln minus a ln. So that's ln of x plus 1 squared over x minus 2 plus ln a. But now I've got a ln plus a ln so we can multiply those together. So it's ln of uh, a lots of x plus 1 squared over x minus 2. So the constant of integration is now inside the lun.